Hey yo, it's Guido coming at you with a Tactics Talk. Thanks for tuning in on this episode. I am featuring a replay analysis <coughs> of Artie. <coughs> Artie. We're doing Artie. We're doing Artie. It's Captain Obvious in his Tier 7 M12. And he's only playing Artie, he says, for the missions. They're only for the missions. It's not for griefing. It's not because he's hungover or drunk or both. It's because the missions... Alright, man, I believe you. I believe you. That's why I played Artie, right? Because of the missions. Hey, look. If you're going to play Artie, do it right. There's a lot of missions. Let's see how this goes. And we have a big finish. We have a big finish. Alright, so right off the bat, let's talk about artillery positioning. There is both the positioning of the tank and the positioning of your initial shot or the reticle on where you think the first guys to be lit are going to be. And that has a lot to do with the map, your particular position with your tank. Should we call it a tank? I need a better word for it. It's not a tank. Vehicle? Your vehicle. Your carriage. Your gun carriage. And where you think guys are going to get lit. I don't recommend doing the counter arty thing immediately. You can do, and I have done that in the past. But if you want to do good in arty, do good. If you want to do well in arty, and you want to... You need top experience or you're trying to do some mission that requires stunning and damage and blah, 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 blah. Then you need to get a shot off early because your reload is so long. You need to try to stuff as many shots into the game as possible. That means all that babbling that you have got to get your shots off early. And that means you got to find the first guy that gets lit or one of the first guys that get lit. Whew, that went on for a while. So where are we going to find those guys? Look at your comet. He's way up here. You know that this big flat area typically gets lit and there's some big fatties trundling along trying to get to the place where they're sort of already safe and they're all cringing right now and hoping that no scout lights them so that some chucklehead in the back, sorry Captain Obvious, right now you are that chucklehead, can lob a shell out within the first 30 seconds of the game before you can even do anything. Wah. <laughs> but what does that mean? Captain Obvious, I'd be looking down here, somewhere in this area, looking for the big slow guys because I know that that comet is probably my best bet for lighting. On this map, the other spot is somebody around here on these ridges, maybe coming through there, but that's going to be a fast dude. And the good news is you found a slow dude. So you got over there. And just think about that. It took you all to zoom in. And had you been looking in this general area, you'd probably already be on a reload right now. So all those little amounts of time start to add up. All right, so there you go. In between, I do look for tracers. The reload on this, on this, what else? I'm gonna keep calling it a tank. I'm gonna call it a tank. We'll just call it a tank. It's not a tank, we'll just call it that. It's pretty fast. So if you do look for tracers, and typically on this map, they are in the A8, 9 area and the about A5 area. Do it very quickly, take a quick look, and when you don't see something, go back to where you know you're going to get lights and get your shot. There's also this HT number 6 over here, although he is now behind that cover. Looks like he got a shot for now. Actually, they all show green on this, unfortunately. So he's he is probably in cover. Looks like that Churchill is your best bet. The other thing I want to talk about real quick is the tactical movement of your hull so that you don't get a reset on your zoom. If you can see the field of regard, which is the V coming off of your vehicle, off of your tank right here, you're near the left-hand limit. So the gun will swing along this azimuth quite happily, and you won't lose a lot of dispersion. But if you shift your hole, your dispersion goes out to maximum again. You've lost anything that you zoomed in. That can be very problematic when you're following a tank who's moving this way, and you go past your stop. If you hit X, it will freeze your hole, but then you won't be able to aim past that. I don't use X. I don't recommend it. Just pay attention to where your field of regard is and pre-shift your hole so that you put your targets more or less in the center of it. We'll talk about moving targets in a little while on another shot. So we'll zoom in. The good news is that Churchill is so painfully and blindingly slow that you don't have an issue. All right, so another thing. Leading targets that go dark that seem to be going in the same direction. You've got to get a, a better... Uh, idea of of movement or timing in your nugget because I think you were well behind this guy. I'm actually going to back this up. So let's see if we can get back into shooting on this Churchill. 
We'll take a look at this guy. Here he comes. Here he comes. All right, so he was last seen about here. And you backed up to here. And if you looked at what his movement was, I'd put him about right here by now. And with the weight, I'd put him probably about right here by now. So you're well behind him. So what I do is I watch that rate of movement and I move my cursor. I actually put it out in front of him because where I, I intend to shoot him a, a few inches in front of him, an inch or two, depending on his speed, my time of flight, all that. That's all guesstimation. There are some mods that give you some of that information, by the way. I just don't use them. I watch his movement. So I put my cursor right in front of him. I watch his movement and I say, okay, right now he's moving this fast. And when he, when he goes dark, I just keep moving my cursor that fast. Whatever his rate of movement was, I just keep my cursor moving that fast right in front of him until I'm loaded and pop, I take that shot. <clears throat> I think you got the right idea, but your technique is, is going to be very difficult to use. Plus, I think your timing's off a little bit there. So again, I'd go take a quick look out here. Yep, absolutely. He's around here somewhere, I bet. They're usually not that far. Yeah, they're usually more in amongst those buildings or maybe up there. I saw you move when that tracer went by. That was actually an outgoing from a tank shooting, and you will see those. Those can trick you at times. I'd have quit, keep, kept investigating that A, man. I think you might have had a shot on that guy at some point. A little bit aimless on what we want to do. Having a hard time finding a target. That, t that Type 62 was certainly a target. Ah, oh, here we go. Our Churchill friend is back. Fantastic. He's decided to just come to, oh boy, that did not feel good. And there you go. Good timing, good shot. One of your few direct hits and you got it on a four hit point guy. <laughs> so you got a KV-3 and an E-25 down on the beach because that's where all your special cases go. Oh good, they got a stirb with them too. That's actually not bad. The good news is you've got three, four fantastically dumb people back at your cap. All right. I'm not sure why you shifted on that. I would have taken the M12. It's probably, I get, I'm, if I had to guess, it's because the M44 has less hit points. Maybe that's why you decided to take him out. And we miss him, unfortunately. The M12 knows the jig is up and off he goes. So here goes the M12. He's screaming along this way. Where's he going? And you move away. What I'd have done is I'd have stayed up here and watched. I'd have stayed up here and watched and seen if... See what just happened? And that's interesting that you can see that kind of information in the replay. As a matter of fact, I think this went down too over here. Right next to it. And I want to know that because I want to know if these guys are moving away. Nothing else got knocked down. So we'll go back to what you're doing. Anyway, I had to watch for those things to be destroyed. See if they went that way. If they didn't get destroyed, they probably stopped and went right back to where they were. Kind of like the deer, right? The deer will kind of always loop back around and go back to where it was. Old hunting trick there. Seeing as most Watt players are not much brighter than deer, probably go with that. All right, this is the movement thing I talked about. You're, you're basically pointing right at this guy. Now, initially that was fine because he seemed to be coming this way, but once he cut to the his left, your right, he's going from left to right, I'd have moved it out here. Let it start zooming in. And then just time his approach to this line. If you move left and right, your dispersion increases quite a bit. Straight forward and back, it doesn't increase very much. It's the left or right that gets you forward and back if you were able to do it perfectly with your mouse. You're not going to lose anything with forward and back. So put it out here, let it zoom in, find out where he's going to approach that line as far as the north-south portion of it, and then pickle away on him. You're ready to shoot. You just need to get your solution where you want it. Oh, and he turned just at the wrong time. You got there, but I think it could have been faster. And this is this is kind of the theme for this entire game for you with artillery. You're doing a lot of the things I'm talking about. You're just not doing them quite fast enough. I'd have got ready for that A43 to move, right? He was going to start trucking this way, and this is a perfectly valid shot somewhere in here. Now, you may have shifted over to the 122.44. A little bit slower target. Fired too late. Once you, I would have just fired it right as I got out. Now it wouldn't have mattered too much because your your RNG put it at the absolute outside of the circle. 
but the timing was off. This is a good move. The E25 has to be dealt with. You don't want him getting in amongst you. The good news is all the clowns on the cap are still back there having a clown party. Fire. Just shift it towards him and fire. Oh man, there's three opportunities, four opportunities, five opportunities, six opportunities, and then... Oh! He was unlikely to go up at those guys. So definitely a lost opportunity for shooting someone there. Billy, I'll be honest, I'm not sure what you're looking at. The Hellcat's up there. Go see if you have a shot on him. Kind of looking down at the E25. Are they finally going to kill that guy? You actually had a shot on the T3485. This goes along the lines of when I say, hey, at least investigate it. You don't have anything else going on. Investigate it. It looks like now that you're going to investigate it, and we'll stop. See how I think you had a shot right there. You, you, you had one here. I think you would have had one even just straight away, but maybe even directly on him. You'd have had a shot on that guy. At least splash damage. And I think he was a near dead anyway, or at least damaged. Alright, so this is a good idea. We're getting down to the big finish here pretty soon. I would move back towards my clowns in the back. Incredible, they still haven't gone anywhere. This is one of the worst parts of a game if you're a good player and you've managed to get yourself killed before now. And you stick around to watch it, which... Sometimes I don't recommend if you have high blood pressure. Because watching passives attempt to win a game by doing any kind of maneuver really makes you want to pull your hair out sometimes. Now there's a difference between passives and just new new players who aren't that good. You know what I mean? I'm talking about the 30, 40,000 game guys that still insist on sitting on the cap. That's a passive. All right. Uh oh, now this gets interesting here. We got a Su-122-44. This is another example of the movement thing I talked about. You look at the Su-124, he looks intent on going south, and your problem right now is that your field of regard, the right-hand limit, is right about where he is. So you need to shift your whole, your whole hole with the uh, S and D key over this way, right? and get the back edge or the left edge of your field of regard somewhere near him so that he can move into the larger area that you don't have to shift your hole into. You'll see that you're going to get a great example of it here. A couple times you've shifted it. Now I'd take that shot right there. Just find him, shoot it. There you go. So now we're trying to get away. We got a Firefly and a Scorp. We've managed to lose our TD. Oh crud, there's an A43. Now I'm spotted. That's not good. They have three artillery, and I really expected you to blow up right here. One of them just fired on the Scorp, because he's got a stun. Ooh, both of them fired on the Scorp, and he survived both. And one fired on you. So that's all three. You're good to go if you noticed all that. I actually didn't notice it the first time I looked through this. I only thought the Scorpion had been hit once, but it looks like he's been hit twice. How he survived that as a soft-skinned tank, I never will know. I think I'd have kept moving if I were you. I, you might have been dark, but it wasn't for long. And if, if you weren't and they noticed you stopped, you, you're in danger of being hit. And maybe you realize that. So here's the thing for all you prototypes or proto-artillery players, all you guys that want to do it right. If you're going to do it, do it right. See those round things that are moving? And they have these tracks on it, and it makes this vehicle go forward. Hey, you can move in your artillery. You can move. And in this case, I would move. And in fact, Captain, I'd be up here somewhere. I would move closer. The reason you want to be closer in your artillery is the time of flight is shorter and the accuracy is better. You do have to be careful about getting into arc problems. You don't want to be right up in their face necessarily. But another two squares forward, maybe three at the most, would be fantastic as far as helping your shots get downrange faster and more accurately. Helps with lead fire, helps with accuracy, it's just a good idea. And you do a lot of kind of moving around. I'm not, I'll be honest, I'm not sure what you're looking for unless it's just to pick up the stray tracer. It's unlikely a tracer is going to be coming out, at least for the moment. These guys are sort of moving up through bushes and things like that. This was the last place you saw these guys. I'm willing to bet at least one is still somewhere in here. The old deer returning to the same position trick. I'd put my cursor right about here because I expect them to be along the back edge. Maybe maybe here if I want to split the difference between somebody hiding in these bushes and somebody hiding right here. 
or just here or just here but in any event somewhere where I can just sit there let it zoom in and go alright where is this guy as soon as you spot it just a real nice easy move over and click remember that easy movements right and left will change your dispersion less than jerking the pipper over jerking the aiming point over at a high rate here you go so not bad now you're doing it and now we're just waiting where is this guy gonna show up oh don't move don't stop it no no oh <laughs> excuse me notice if you'd have been sitting right here fully zoomed you could have just slid it right down and went plap and that dude is gone And it would have been plat. That's exactly the sound it makes. Oh, looking for some lead fire and just too much. So down goes the M44. Fireflies trucking along, thinking he's all fine and dandy. Nope. So more than likely, based on that, and the Scorpion didn't light anyone, those artilleries, at least one of them, are down on the left side, more on the A0. And there's a bit of luck. This game is probably over if this guy had been playing. Although I don't know what his skill level is. If he's just a bot, it may not have mattered. He may actually be more effective right now for lighting up the Scorpion than had he actually used the movement keys. So a little movement forward. You didn't move for two shots, or at least one shot you didn't move. The second one you moved, I think that was probably a good idea. Just in case they happen to be looking. All right, so this is just going to be some splash action on him. Kind of looking at him, kind of looking at him. I'd have fired right... Oh, man. I, I just wouldn't have gone that far. I'd have put it right there and fired. I'm going to wait a little bit, wait a little bit, hoping he goes into it. And lo and behold, that there you go. So that ended up being good. My intuition to go faster may have actually been a miss. And that's very unlucky. Scorpion misses, and he should have just kept going because boom... Now we get into the old, can I splash this guy? Oh, all right. So instead of moving around and trying to get, I'd have, I'd have figured he was going this way. I probably would have put it right there where you still had a green line and fired it as soon as it got lit or as soon as it got loaded. I might even, I'd have fired right there too. But we wait quite a long time. And there's no telling where he got. He probably tucked way up under that rock and just gets away. All right, we ready for the big finish. Now we're, I'm going to go chipmunk speed here. Getting ready for the big finish. So we're coming over here. So what do you think, folks? Are we going to have a duel or are we just going to have a bunch of camping? Would I make you watch a bunch of camping? Probably not. We're going to have the dance of the sugar plum fairies right here. This is not a terrible spot. I'll be honest, I'm not sure what you're looking for here. Whether you, Is somebody going to just fire a random shot out? I don't think so. So in these cases, when I am trying to turtle up in an arty, I will have my, my view somewhere around my green line, which is my spotting range. And in the direction that I expect to, be, to get spots from, the bush you're in, I can't actually get back to the tent. Yeah, I can. This bush is fine. It sort of sort of protects you from this direction, but I think even if somebody came up here, they would still see you. So it's not really my favorite spot. I think I might be back here. There's a bush right here you can sit in where you can get a little bit better view. If they come from your right side, you're bumming because you're already looking that way. So I will I will say this is sort of an un, un, unexpected position to be in. So it's good for that. But as far as being not spotted, it's not great. Now here's something else that's interesting. So you got your aiming point there, and you come over here, you, you shift right, and we look at that, and we can see, look at how it's jerking around. We move around, and now look at what it's doing. It's having epilepsy. See that doing that? And I, I think at this point you're thinking, what on earth is going on with this? Well, it's because you were actually, if I can get this thing back, you were actually backing up into this wall right here. So folks, if you're driving artillery and you notice that your aiming circle is doing that breathing thing, you are probably moving. So you have somehow inadvertently made it start to move. And I have done that multiple times, whether it's reverse or forward. I see my aiming circle breathing. That's because I'm moving and somehow I have started that. 
Oop, and then he stops doing it. But we're, we got a spot. We got a Hummel coming at us. Okay, so we're waiting. On, oh my gosh, there's M12. So we'll just do a quick change of the aim and balloon. Oh! Missed him! I think I'd have taken that shot myself. So I think we just got a little bit unlucky there. Unsure of why the M12 would not have just shot and splashed you. That would have given the Hummel the opportunity to move in. And had you come out, the Hummel would have had you. And the M12 could have tried to scoot away. That was just very strange to me. So you get reloaded. Nice and aggressive. Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairies. Uh-oh. That M12 made a big mistake. Down he goes. So, alright, we got this. Uh-oh. The Hummel's not an idiot. He's coming at you. He's coming at you. Look at the agility of these things. The sheer agility. And he just drives right up and says, Hi! Oh, we survived! We have survived. We're a heavier tank, potentially. Let's get our gun. Uh-oh. Hummel's not an idiot. He's trying to keep you from getting your gun on. Uh-oh, jeez. Who reloads firstest? Oh! And I'll be honest, I do not know how you did not kill yourself also. Something goofy with the HE mechanics. Maybe it's where your your round is live coming out of the out of this barrel. I don't think it's at the end of the barrel. I think it's actually closer in here based on the modeling. I can't remember how it goes, but for whatever reason, that was interesting. Whether the explosion was actually contained within the middle of the vehicle and nothing was allowed out because of where it happened, I don't know. Maybe it actually happened on the ground. I don't think your gun was sticking on the ground, but you were pretty close to being <laughs> pushed off. All right, man. Nice job. Shotgun in the face. We end up living through that one. Like I said, if you're going to play artillery, do it right. I hope you learned something here, I think. <laughs> All right, guys. Take it easy.